Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, welcome to The Painted Cell. Now first let me say, you may hear some noise in the background. We are working hard in the living room to finish that fireplace up. We're working now on the hearth, and I will be sharing how that whole fireplace wall turned out so far. I do have some touch-up paint and things to do, and we are working on the tile for the hearth. So I will get into that with you in just a few moments. And I also, I finished painting the entire room except for a, the baseboard, which we had to put the shoe molding back. So all of that is done. So there may be lots of noise in the background. So I, I hope you don't hear it. My, my camera's pretty good at sort of drowning that out. But if you do, that's what's going on. Now, I can't believe it is already December. It's the end of the year 2022, and I cannot believe it. It has been a really amazing and crazy 12 months uh, for, for our family and I'm sure for you. There's so much going on and at the end of the, the year we're always so busy, so super, super busy trying to get everything done, gifts, visiting, family events, and all of that. And so I'm just going to share what I can that's going on in my house and with my family and my decorating and so forth. I know a lot of people are already completely done decorating and I'm not because we've had construction going on in projects and I'm totally okay with that. We're in, su in such a better place now than we were last year at this time. And so I'm very, very grateful and happy and just trying to enjoy each and every moment of this last month of 2022. And I love December. I love winter months as far as the cozy factor and Christmas. And then after that, New Year's, new goals, the sort of refresh, reorganize, all of those types of goals. So I'm just really trying to enjoy everything as it comes, and I really hope that you are as well. So I did get the entire living room painted, and the color that I used was Baja, and it's a great kind of neutral color. I know that it's not coming across on camera the way it looks in person. I've tried to take photos and, and tried to have like different lighting and land, th things on, and it's just... It's kind of not coming across the way it actually looks in person, but it's a really nice neutral color and it complements our floor. I absolutely love our LVP floors. They have presented a little bit of a challenge here and there as far as getting the right tones of the neutral colors that I wanted in here without things looking fleshy. I really don't want that peachy, orangey, fleshy skin pinky color at all in any of the paint that I choose. And sometimes in the store or on the swatches, it won't look that way and you get it home and it looks totally different. So I'm very happy with this color. It sort of is a sand color and it will really go with every, every color and every season. And that's what I wanted and it works with the floors. So the color is Baja. And I also really love this color sculptor clay that's right below it on the little paint sample sheet that you get at the store. I'm probably going to be using this color in a few rooms in the house. It is a little more on the gray side and I'm not necessarily a true gray, that cold stark gray. I don't, I don't like gray and bright white together. It's just me personally. I know a lot of people really do and it looks beautiful in their home. They really pull it off. But for me, I always lean toward more ochre yellows, warm tones, that rustic kind of mixture, just sort of French country, European, old world, all that kind of stuff. That's sort of what I usually gravitate to. And so, and sometimes other things as well. We all like to mix things, don't we? But this color, I think is just a nice neutral clay color, just like it says, and it's still warm enough and neutral enough that I think I can pull it off. So I'll probably try that color in the future as well. Now let's talk about this fireplace wall. In the last video, I showed you how we had it all put together, the different pieces that we used. We used some shiplap paneling boards from Home Depot, and we used some fence boards that I got on clearance and some other pieces of trim and wood, and then a couple of corbels for the fireplace to dress it up and put a new shelf top on it with some trim. And I think it looks so much better than the original. It really adds some warmth and character to the room without being over the top or too ornate and a little bit rustic. Now, if you know me, I love that old chipping wood look that's been painted over and some flaking off or aged. I really love that look on wood and I could have gone with something a little more classic on this wall, but I started adding the texture and then I, I tried different stains and paint techniques and I, I tried different combinations of paint and then some dark and then I ended up trying 
the mantle white again and then it just I tried so many different things and then finally I had I just painted everything the same color as the wall and it looked good there was still some age and character from all of the texture that I had added but it really I, I kept looking at it and I was like I don't like this up against this grout color I just don't like it much like in the kitchen I ended up going back over the mantle with a black chalk paint wash and then I did a glaze over that just to give it an old world look and it complements the doors in the kitchen that are really dark but not quite the same color the fireplace wall itself is all the wall color that Baja color there's still texture on the the boards on the bottom half and then around you know the actual mantle it's just that really dark color so there's some contrast there and it separates the brick and mortar from the wall color which was just really creating an odd look that I I didn't really like so I'm happy with that now I really love brick and I put in a faux brick wall in the kitchen so I was trying to make the brick around the fireplace which was real brick look closer to what was in the kitchen and so I went through several steps with that and I really got it to where it looked really great and the problem is because of how everything was looking the combination of the grain in the floor and the colors and the mortar and it, it just was not looking right it looked very striped like you know like a grid pattern especially especially the hearth and so what i decided to do was do a really messy mortar look so i did just took the same mortar color i added a little bit of paint of the wall color to tone it down a little bit and i just went all over the brick again just to tone it down and just do a really messy mortar look and I love it now it looks great it complements what's in the kitchen but it's not the exact same because it's obviously it obviously has more of a mortar wash on it but it looks great and I'm I'm happy with it as always there's a million things that you can do on any project with any material so this is just what I ended up with and I'm really happy with that and the way that that looks so what was really bothering me about the brick before I covered it all up with the mortar was the actual hearth. There were just really hard lines and a grid and it was just, it was really taking your eye straight to there. And, and it was, to me, it was just an eyesore. And so one of the things I like to do when I'm re redesigning or redecorating is try to do things that eliminate eyesores that maybe don't cost that much money. And so originally I had some stucco and I started to fill in the hearth area only. And then I ran out of the stucco and so I thought well I'll just take grout so I just wanted to see what it would look like covered in a solid color I thought well maybe I can make this look just like a slab of limestone and so I loved that it was covered up I loved covering up that top part of the hearth and but then I thought you know this would be a good opportunity to add a little bit of tile maybe a little bit of interest and so I went to floor and decor in Columbia and they had a lot of different tile of course I have a great selection but I just, I know how I am and how I like to change things out and the colors that I like to use and swap out. So I wanted something neutral, even though they had a lot of different options. And so I found this sort of worn black, blackish gray tile mixed with like tans and creams. It's, it would blend in all of the colors plus blend in that black wood stove. Plus when you're bringing ashes, when you're putting in logs and so forth if you have any ashes that fall down I thought well this would hide it and I bought black grout so that's what I was going to do on the hearth and then I was going to do a travertine trim and then I thought well travertine would look really beautiful too so I thought well while I'm here I'm going to get both options I'm going to get this 8x8 black and tan I'll call it those colors tile and then I'll get the 8x8 travertine I will always love this product and I will always love it in any house that we have. So it is kind of hard on the feet though. Our last house, I noticed my legs really ached a lot. Standing, It's like standing around on concrete or well, hard stone. And so when I was doing dishes a lot and all of that, just walking around on it a lot, it is, it is kind of hard on the legs. So in here, it's only going to be on the hearth. So I won't be walking around on it all day. And so once we got that home and looked at everything and kind of played around with different placement uh, we've decided on the travertine on the top and the trim around the edge it's actually called a crown molding but it coordinates 
with that with those eight by eight tiles and we're going to sort of trim out the hearth and put the eight by eight tiles on top in a diagonal pattern and then we might run it around the bottom or we may leave the brick exposed i'm not really sure but i'm going to love that look it really adds some texture and that natural sort of stone look i think it adds some richness without being too plain but plain enough where it will go with everything and, and complement anything that i would like to sit on it or any season if i go through and do different lighter colors for the spring or if i do bright colors for summer fall colors christmas everything i think it's just really going to be very very versatile and so that's what we've decided to do there and we are finishing that up today so that's the last part of that fireplace wall as soon as that's done we are done that room other than me doing a tiny bit of trim paint because we added shoe molding i've already caulked and i'm going to be painting that so we're almost done and so the next video is going to be putting all the furniture in place and starting to decorate i'm really excited about that i hope you all had a good thanksgiving we stayed home and we ended up actually just doing homemade italian food and it was wonderful so that big special stuff yourself all the courses meal will be saved for christmas so that was a really nice day at home and i did do some work in the living room on that day so it was just nice and peaceful to be home and so the next day my husband had an appointment and so we had to get out i was gonna try to just stay home i don't like shopping on black friday i really don't like crowds and tons of people bumping and their carts are in your way and then they leave their cart in the way and go into the aisle and you can't anyway but while we were out i thought I want to pop into Hobby Lobby because there are a few things I want to try to get while they're on sale um, and then a few other things, some, some ideas that I have for some of the trees and displays that I want to do. So we did pop into there. That's the only store I went to on Black Friday. So I do have a small haul from Hobby Lobby to share with you on my Black Friday excursion as short as it was. Um, it was a madhouse in there, you guys. It was a madhouse. So we didn't stay super long, uh, but I do, I like the things that I got. So I'll share those with you. And then I did go, Saturday was small business shopping where you're supposed to support small local small businesses. And so Savvy Home, they have three stores. They have one in Aiken, one in North Augusta, Georgia, one in Augusta, Georgia. They, um, they were having a 20% off sale and they usually don't have sales like that. So we are still in need of furniture. And so I thought, well, let's go to all of those stores. And then there was one more consignment store in Georgia, all in kind of the same area within 30 minutes of each other. So we went there on Saturday, had a day of shopping. Long story short, we didn't come out with any furniture. Unfortunately, I just didn't see anything that we loved. And so we decided just to keep waiting. We're just going to wait until we find something that we really love. So I think the easiest thing for me to do to show you all of the items that I purchase is to take the camera down off of the tripod and just set the items up maybe on top of this fireplace here or maybe over there on that table because some of the items are a little bit larger and instead of trying to hold them up here and fit them into the screen, I can just show you that way. So let me take the camera off the tripod and I'll show you what I found. All right, so the first thing I want to show you are these two decorative shelves, and they have the little plate groove in the back for displaying your decorative plates or whatnot. And these were $4 a piece. Hold on, the price is on the bottom. Let me flip this over. Oops. Sorry. Price is on the back. There we go. So these were marked down to $4 a piece. And I just think they will be perfect as little risers for my displays instead of using a chunk of wood or a little, you know, if you're in a farmhouse, you'll use those little tiny tables and things like that. But I thought, well, this will be nice instead of a shelf. It, it looks a little more French country, European old world. Um, so I thought these would be great for that. And they're nice and long. Uh, probably won't hang them on the wall, but I will use them as risers. These next two items I got at Savvy Home in Aiken, and they are the two pieces that I'm going to be adding to my collection. This copper teapot or tea kettle, whatever you'd like to call it, does have some blemishes. It does have some dents, but it has the brass on it also, which I really like. I like when it has a mixture of copper and brass. 
I really like this piece. I love the shape of the handle. I think it's just a really neat piece that will look good either up above my sink or above the fridge or really anywhere. And the other little piece I picked up was this one. It has sort of a lion's head detail on it. Cute little handles on it. And I just thought that was adorable. And that will be cute to put some greenery in. Now on Small Business Saturday, I went to another consignment store. It's called Consign Design. And I think it's still considered Augusta. It was just um, maybe a few miles from the other stores. So I picked this up. I've been wanting one of these to use in displays. And this one, after I purchased it, I realized it had been welded um, in the very top, the back, like back here. And so that one kind of sticks out a little more. But as long as you look at it this way, you really can't tell, but it's fine. I know you can find these online and order them. No big deal, but it, this one's huge. I think it's maybe 26 inches. As you can see, it's it's quite large. So that will be really fun to use all spring and summer outside on the front porch or inside for display. So I love that and I love the rusty finish that it already has. So I picked that one up. All right, so here are the curtains that I purchased. You get a set, they are fully lined. Um, they're Ralph Lauren, or Ralph Lauren, however you wanna say it, um, for $39.99. You can hang these three different ways, rod pocket, back tabs, or ring top. I always do the ring top. They're linen herringbone, and they're calling them silver. So I'm assuming people would consider this a light gray. In the store, I thought they were a little more bluish gray, and I'm sure it's hard for you guys to tell on, on the camera. So anyway, these are the ones that I picked up. I'll try to use them somewhere. Like I said, they're lined, they're blackout. They're really nice fabric. I could not go purchase all of this fabric and have somebody make these for probably five or 10 times that much. So you really, really, really cannot beat these types of deals at home goods on their curtains if you know if you can find something decent so I'm going to try these in a couple different rooms and if they don't work I will take them back so make sure you check home goods for curtains before you spend tons and tons of money because sometimes you can find some good pieces there also at home goods I found this Cynthia Rowley table runner and it was $19.99 it has the traditional red and green, a little bit of gold, and it has this muted blue on this kind of oatmeal backing. And that's why I got it because I loved all of the neutrals. And then this was all a little more subtle. And I was hoping that it would tie in with the vintage blue couch out there and the other sort of lighter faded blues that I'm trying to incorporate incorporate and so that's why I got this. I like these different shades of green and then it has this dark green trim at the end as well. So I picked this up and the last purchase from Home Goods were these two Euro shams. It was a set for $39.99. I love the French country look. They're 100% cotton, super super soft and I just just love this neutral color. These are either going to go on a bed or they're going to go on our old couch that we will be using until we find something new or until I get it recovered. But it'll just add a little bit of life to that sofa or really they would look good on anything. So I picked those up. Now from Hobby Lobby, I just decided to put all of the things that I purchased there together minus that little shelf which I already showed you and this greenery that came from sweet simplicity and mixed in some of the pieces from Hobby Lobby. So what I got there on Black Friday, which was their normal prices, they don't really have anything special for Black Friday, um, as far as I know, I picked up this table throw by Robert Stanley. It is 40 by 40 
and I wanted to add some more red and white patterns to what I'm already doing with all of the different red and white stuff in the kitchen. So I picked that up and I got this little Santa pitcher. I, it looks like a huge mug. I'm, I don't know if they're considering it a pitcher. I got it as a planter, of course. I just put some of the little greenery picks that I got at Hobby Lobby in there. I have a ton of these from years past, but I got some more because they're so, I always run out of these and they're so great to put in trees and displays. And then I got this glittery eucalyptus, got some of that. And it looks really good to add variation when you tuck it into other greenery. So I got lots of that. And I think I got four of these little pit berry picks. They're really cute to pop into little displays. And I got some of this. We've all seen this, all the same kind of greenery. The, you really can't beat the prices there, especially when they're 60% off. Now I did pick up these. They were in the garden section. They were not on sale at all. And so I got two packs of two, so they ended up being about $2 a piece. And they're the perfect little size to go with the smaller bird cages that I got. And that's the next thing I wanted to show you. I got these two smaller bird cages. They look very French. I love the little rope tie here with the finial at the top and the doors are a little tricky to get open. I got the door open. I put a little bird in there. He's a little bit larger than what I would like to use in there. I have some a little bit smaller than this that are snow, snowy, glittery covered birds that were also from Hobby Lobby a few years ago. I just need to find those, but they're a nice size to hang in a tree or small enough to sit on a windowsill in the kitchen. So I got two of those and then I picked up one more of these. I showed you this size and style in the last video and they were back on sale. And so I went ahead and got these. This was last week. So they should be coming on sale again, I guess next week. They kind of rotate. So that's why I went ahead and got those on Black Friday. So I got those three and I think that's it from Hobby Lobby. Not a ton. I did actually get one more thing from Hobby Lobby. I picked up a Merry Christmas rug. I may use it out on the front porch. Um, I just put it when you're coming in from the back door because we drag in a lot. Our cats, well, our one cat drags in a lot. So he's always in and out. So I put that at the back door for now, but it wasn't a bad price at all at 60% off. But the best thing that I got so far was a gift in the mail from my sweet friend, Donna from Delightfully Southern. Her husband James made this and she painted it in the perfect Christmas red to go with everything that I'm doing in the kitchen and I can't wait to use it. The letter R is for our last name and I am just so appreciative. It was so thoughtful. Thank you so much, Donna, James, and Buster. And if you haven't visited Donna's channel, please visit her at Delightfully Southern. I will leave a link to her channel in the description box below. I hope you guys are in the Christmas spirit and enjoying the start to this wonderful holiday season. Please take care of yourselves and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.